So I've got my chipboard cover ready now. I've got all my pages off to my left. I've got my top ones. As I did it earlier, I turned them all upside down. So now when I turn them this way, they'll be in the order that I want to use them. So first off, I've got my base. Now I've just got my ATG gun for speed here. We're just gonna take this down and I'm gonna glue it as well. So the tape will keep it in place whilst we add everything on top and the glue will give it a more permanent stick. So we are just pulling down my base. So my chipboard is actually slightly bigger. But that tape has covered it up. Anyway, right. So there's the base down. We've now got our three waterfalls. Now, remember I said we want these scored really well, so I'm just going to give it a last scoring. I'm going to take off the tape, and then this glue again will also give me a bit of breathing space. It'll give me some maneuverability as well, and add some extra strength to adhesion. So I'm just going to turn it on its side, and I'm putting my fold up against my base. So when I'm sticking this down, I'm sticking here, but I'm actually looking here and here to make sure... I'm lined up here because that's where if you're looking just here and you're actually a little bit off you'll notice it a lot here when we add the other ones so we're going to add the second one I'm taking off the tape I'm adding the glue so now when I open it the fold edge now is going to be lined up with this. But again, I'm not too worried about this edge. I'm more worried about looking over here. So there's the second one. And you can see they're lined up pretty well there. And now my third one. You can stick it down like that again. What I like to do is turn it around and place it on top here, just so when we come to open it, we haven't got a join there. So it's sort of hidden this side. So I'm gonna make sure I'm not touching that join, otherwise it won't fold flat just a hair's breadth back and again lining it up down here and there's our waterfall pieces done now I'm just going to add my band and for now I'm just going to stick it roughly in the middle. I'm just eyeballing it. You can measure it if you want. So there's my top done. We're finished. Okay. So now we're going to work on the bottom. Now, if you remember when we did the cover, we actually made it just a fraction bigger than what we wanted. That's going to give me some breathing space when we come to add our pages. And by adding that extra little sixteenth of an inch there, it's just going to stop our flaps from meeting too closely in the middle there. Because we can just split them just a fraction like that. And everything will just lay a little better. So we're going to start off by putting our left piece here. So I'm just going to take off the tape.
add my glue. So you can really see how deep this album is by this page. So I'm going to turn it around. Now I'm going to line it up, make sure it's lined up down both edges as well. And I'm going to take it up just a fraction short of the edge of the chipboard. So I've got a little bit of space here and here. So I've centralized it there. I've centralized it all the way down and brought it in just a tiny, you can just see it there, a tiny hair's breadth from the edge there. Okay, so that's our first page in. And we're gonna do exactly the same for the other side. So I've taken the tape off. Added some glue just so I can move it a little bit. So I'm just folding it back again. I'm centralizing it left and right. But also now I've got this page down here to line it up against. So that's our front page is done, our top two. So now we're going to put the ones that go up and down. Now you won't have a tripod in the way, so it'll be a lot easier for you. So I've got my two middle flaps. And this time, I'm centralizing them between the two score lines here. And I'm lining it just short of my chipboard join there. Make sure you don't go over that little gully in the tape there. Okay. So because these two were out a little bit, there's actually a little bit of breathing space each side for this flap, so this not hitting that spine there. So here's my second middle. So I turn it around. Again, lining it between those two score lines, not touching them. There. So you can already see how the box is folding up and creating quite a deep little album already. So we've got our flaps, so we're now into the middle. We've now got our gate fold. So now I'm going to be, fold the top away. Lining up, hiding my top and bottom these two flaps joins there. So there's one of my gate folds. Let's turn it around. So I'm just lining it between the score lines again. So I want to make sure my gates are meeting nicely as well. Oh, I've moved it. There we are. We have our gate fold. So now we've reached the center. So this is now our pouch. So 
So now because of the depth with the pouch, we want to make sure we're not crossing these, otherwise they won't close. So what I'm doing is I'm lining it up between those two. So there's a little bit of space in between. So to make sure you don't touch the line, line them between the score lines, these half inch score lines on our gate folds. Okay. Now I'm just going to do my sides. So again, make sure you don't cross those score lines. Oh, I forgot to add that little bit of glue to our two little pockets, which are going to hide things nicely. I'm going to take my bone folder and get in and I'll squeeze that down later on. So again, keeping it away from my score lines so that my gate folds still close. Okay, so I'm just going to get my bone folder in to those corners to get those two little flaps. For some reason the video cut out just for the last little bits. So that's all I did then was I glued the two pockets, the triangular ones, straight onto the gate for flaps. And on the back, I just glued the bottom of this pocket on first, aligned it each side. Okay, so it's time now to add our photo mats and magnets. So I've got my black construction tape back. My magnets are half a mil by 10 mil. And my photo mats, you're going to need 17 of them, four and a quarter by six and a quarter. So they'll fit your six by four photos perfectly. So let's start with our waterfall. So my first photo mat, I'm going to put here. So I like to put my magnets underneath where the paper goes, if I possibly can. Because if I put it underneath this, I've got the bulk of the photo mat and the photo, which will mean the magnet's not as strong as it can be. So that's why I like to put my photo mat down first. Now I'm just gonna close my band, just a little mark top and bottom. So I know I've got it centralized. I'm gonna take some of my black tape and tape it down. So this also helps to smooth out the magnet so you don't get the harsh bump underneath your paper. Then I'm just gonna put a bit more tape across the middle there. Then I grab my magnet, drop it down, and I can, so I'm keeping that band back so that I've got that bulk still there. So my magnet is now attached there, and they should align. And the other place I'm gonna put some magnets is here, so I'm going to add my photo mats before I do that. So because I've got a photo mat up here, I'm going to put one down here. So I'm working opposite corners. So I'm just leaving a little black border around, not straight. 
looking to see if it was in camera shot rather than looking at my album. Hopefully I've got an extra spare one by the end, otherwise I'll just cut another one. Okay, this time I'm going to concentrate on my page rather than the camera. That's better. Okay. So if my paper is going to be here because my magnet's gone here, my photo mat is going to go on the right. And now I want the magnet, so if it's going to go here, it's going to come to here. So I want my photo mat this side. Okay, so now I can do my second set of magnets. Again, some black tape. The magnets are like in my scissors. You can see the magnets are getting everywhere. So, not too close to the corner, otherwise the paper won't cover it. In there. So place the piece upside down, drop it. Close it, and it's been picked up. Press the paper down. So now that will hold my box all in place. But because this is so important, I don't want it getting loose here, I'm actually gonna add a set to the bottom as well. And this will just keep my box portion of the album closing neatly every time. I'm just going to add it there. I'll try to drop it on. So now when I close it, I'm going to make sure my entire box is as I want it at the end. So nice, neat finish all around. Press it down. So now, when I close my box, those magnets will keep everything nice and neat. The only other place I need a magnet now is my central pocket. So how many sets are these? Four sets. So it's not too demanding on magnets. One more bit. Drop it on. Line up the sides, press it down, and we've got our pouch. So now it's all magnetized. 
it's all ready to go. We're just now going to finish adding all the photo mats. So with my waterfall, what I like to do is all these front ones. Add ones there, so to the left of the page. And then I like to have some paper between two photo mats. So I like to put them on the left as well. That's totally up to you. You can have two photo mats there, paper each side. Totally your choice. Again, just keeping it the same all the way through. So make sure you're not going over that score line, you're actually lining up with the score line. So the score line's there, I've left like about, oh, what is it, a sixteenth? One eighth of an inch, just so it's even all around three edges. And then this is where you can see there's no bulk to cover here because we flipped our last waterfall page the other way. That's the waterfall section done. So we've already done our first three pages. So I like to keep it quite symmetrical. So this time I'm gonna go here. Because we have no magnets affecting anymore, it's totally up to you. So when I open it up this way, I'm going to go opposite corners again. So when I open it now, I'm not going to try and get my photo mats the same side, so I'm going to go over to this side. So this time I'm going to go here. Otherwise all my bulk will be here between the photo mats and the photo. So as I open it up here, I'm going to want this one, this side, so I'm going to put my photo mat here. So I said I was going to do it here, so yeah, it's on the left. So I'm going to go right. So I've got my photo mat from the middle. And because I messed up one of those first ones, I am one short, so I'll cut out another one later. But the photo mat will be fine for now. I'll put another one on the back, but on the bottom. And that's all the photo mats done because the middle has no photo mats. So that'll go in 
It'll go in smoother later because we'll have the paper covering the join. All the magnets have been added. Got a spare magnet for somehow. All done. So now's the fun bit. We'll go and start decorating. Okay, so we're ready now to start to decorate the album. And I've chosen to use the From the Sea set from Knitwits. So I've already started cutting all the bits out just to speed things along. So I got a front cover piece, which is six and a half by seven and a half because our chipboard was just slightly bigger. So that'll fill up nicely. So I'm just gonna add some tape up to the edge. So this paper didn't come like this. What I did was I put down in Microsoft Publisher my blue C paper and then I added all the extra pieces in bits and just resized and layered as I wanted. But you could just as easily just fussy cut and stick them. So I'll probably decorate that a little bit more. I've got this submarine image, which is really cool, which I can 3D foam, but I don't want to do that now because it'll just get in the way. So my back cover is exactly the same size. It's six and a half by seven and a half. So as I said before, the tape will keep it in place for now and the glue will make sure it stays there. So here's my back, yeah, just make it sure. It wouldn't be the first time I've done that. So I've just added the subtle whale in the back, if you can see it. And then my spine is seven and a half by seven eighths of an inch. Obviously you can decorate it however you want. So if you wanted more black showing, just make it slimmer. Okay, so here is our album cover, minus the bits which I'll add on at the end. So now we're going into our waterfall. So let's start with a waterfall band. So these are now gonna be an inch long. The length doesn't matter because it depends what you're gonna to want to do. So I'm going to line it up here and I've got my dolphin image here which I've layered onto a circle okay. so I can stick that on to the end there. So I'm just going to add a second one inch band strip into the middle. But just to add some extra strength to my topper, what I've done is I've gone to one of the first die cuts I've ever had, which were the nestability, the scalloped ones, and I've cut two scalloped circles. So I'm gonna put my dolphin onto this one. I'm gonna close it and work out where I want my dolphin. I'm just gonna put some tape so it'll stay there for now. And some glue. And I'm just gonna cover that end piece. I'm gonna cover the whole, yeah. So now my magnet is over here, so the thickness here doesn't really 
matter. So I'm going to open it up. I'm just going to hide this with my second nestability. So I cut these just out of the scrap pieces I had from making my pages. I said nothing goes to waste much on this album. So I'm just going to line up the scallops. Now I could cut another circle out to go there, which I might do later on, just to hide the back a bit. So there's my belly band done for my waterfalls. It's now time to decorate the waterfalls itself. So I've stuck to this striped paper. So you're gonna cut six pieces for the waterfall at six and a quarter by one and three eighths. And you'll see I've just used the one this time, just the same paper all the way through. First one. So the second one now is going to go here. So make sure you're lining between the score line and your photo mat. See if I can do them in one go. So it's really easy to cut because they're all the same size. So I just cut it at the long side and then just went through my cutter one and going 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 like that. and the last two so this is the last of the six because the last piece needs to be a little bit wider because we're covering that as well so the last waterfall piece is six and a quarter so the same height as our mat by one and seven eighths I'm going to put some glue on that as well, just to make sure it's really stuck over. I'm going to have the green sticking out rather than white. And there's the top, all complete. I'm now going to do this middle bit. So it's the same, pretty much as the outside. One and seven eighths, uh, seven and a half by seven eighths. So because we're sticking this down onto um, our construction tape here, we need to make sure we've got the glue. On it as well. Okay. That's the spine done. And now all these flat pages are the same size with the same photo mats. So I've bulk cut all the pieces here as well at six and a quarter by two and seven eighths. So it's just shy of three inches. So we're going to start going under the water now. So the dolphin has jumped out of the water. So let's have some watery paper to go. I love these kits from Knitwits. The colour matching and the patterns go all the way through. It's brilliant. So 
I've now got a few more to try. So what I'm going to do is maybe head to the centre and work out from there. So let's have two blues. check I think I'll add in the opposite corner and we put the reds either side So I've done a red one opposite as well, which you can see there. So now as I shut it, this will come up, this will come down, this will come across here. So I'm going to put a, we can see that, so I'm going to put a red here. So I'm going to start opening, I'm going to put a blue C to match the dolphin on top. And I'll keep the check going down. So like I said, these were bulk cut as well at the start. You can cut a load of them, play about. I quite like some repositionable tape you can get from sticks too. So you can put them down, change them, interact, uh, before you actually commit and stick them down. So there we are, all our flaps have been covered. So now I've got my photo mat and yes I did remember to add the one I was short on. Just move that out of the way. So my pull out, my photo mat, my photo mat was six and a quarter so my mats are going to be six and a quarter and the distance depends on what size your mat's done but if you followed mine it's one and a half. So one and a half by six and a quarter. I've got that red, which we've already got going on, and some more of the C. So that's our photo mat, which doubles up as the closure. Actually ties in the blue nicely or that way brings the red across so it works both ways so now I'm gonna do my two triangles so my triangle pocket front I've started off at three and a half inch square and then I'm gonna take my cutter and I'm gonna line up the corners and cut it in half diagonally. I'm 
just going to attach them to the two corners or the two corner pockets I should say so here try not to use a paper with like words or anything because when you cut it diagonally it's going to end up upside down on the other one so you don't want that happening and now we're going to do our gate fold so my gate fold started off as seven and a quarter by six and a quarter which fitted there but now I'm going to cut it at six and five eighths sorry three and five eighths so now I've got two pieces. Because actually, no, I'm not going to put tape on the back of these because I want to slide them in and I find it just catches all the time. So for my original one, my Cosmos one, you remember this is a bit where you had the owl cut and opening up in the middle. This is what took me a long time because I wanted to make the middle something a bit different. The original ones I designed just had two more flaps and I liked it but it wasn't 100% happy so that's what's taking me a time is to work out how to get a better middle and I think I've got it now. Right so I'm just over those two bits inside and now I'm going to try and line it up the best I can there we are so now we've got this central portion with the adjoining bit so if you wanted to add a topper here, you could always just add some, just glue half of it. So when it opens up, then it'll take the topper with it. But it's our photo map, which will keep it closed. So now we're gonna open up and we're gonna do our tag pockets. So the backing is gonna be three and a half inches across and it's going to tuck in there, so the length doesn't matter, but as long as it's about four, four and a half inches, I think, you no, know, you'll probably need to go four and a quarter. And again, I'm not going to be adding tape because it'll catch on its way down. So I'm just going to open the pocket and push it in. See, so you don't need to take it all the way down there, just come into about there. So three and a half inches across, about four and a quarter, four and a half. Just remembering the longer it is, the trickier it is to get it inside. Because it's going to want to stick to the back. Okay. So there we have our pocket backings and I've got the fronts now which are three and a half by two and three quarters. Three and a half, oops sorry, three and a half, two and three quarters. And then for these tag pockets, I've gone ahead and used these tag dies by Lisa Horton. 
They're called the Essential Collections Tags and Banners. You can see it comes with some banners and a lot of tag shapes. So I've cut some black ones out of the biggest tag. And then I've gone down one layer so that I've got a nice mat and layer to go on it. But if you wanted to add a hull and a reinforcer, you can, and you can add some ribbon and things, but I'm trying to keep it quite flat here. So, I've got H2O, I've got some greens. I do what, I'm gonna wait until I've done this pocket to see what fits. So, I've got my top flap, and I've got a piece of my watery one again. So my central pocket, the front flap is seven and a quarter by four inches. I've used quite a bit of tape on this here because it's gonna be lifted and things by a topper. So I don't want it to lift when the topper gets pulled up. So let's add that on. And then underneath, I've got my central pocket front, and this is seven and a quarter by three. So now that I've done it all, I can start looking at my tags. I quite like the H2O. Or are we bringing in some of the green? Now I'm going to go with the H2O. So these are really nice, big size. And they layer brilliantly. Well done, Lisa. Um, what I might do is just cut a plain one for the back for some journaling. So I'm gonna match the other side as well. Let's have two H2Os. So we now have our tags and our triangles done for our gatefold. Just like I did with the dolphin earlier, I've got the similar one where I've just made a circle in Publisher and I've just placed the octopus and resized him on top. I've cut out another of my Spellbinders scalloped circles. And just gonna add, I should have put some tape on. I got a bit too excited, I think. So I can always go back and I can fussy cut or add some borders. In fact, I think I've got a border here I could use. Yeah, we need some black or something to hide it. So I'll come back to finish that page later on. And now the inside pocket. The flap is seven and a quarter by four, the same as the front. There we are. I love the inside, it's got all the animals and wording. And then the central pocket, we want to cover that bit and it's going in there. So the length doesn't matter, but I've cut mine at seven and quarters and mine's, it's got to be four inches or more. So I just had what was left of my piece rather than go and cut up another piece. And 
this pocket's deep enough so I've been able to add tape because I can get it in without it touching. And there we have it. We have our central pocket all done. We can cut more of these Lisa tags or photos or anything we want. So we close that. Oops, I close that. The magnet's holding it shut. We can close our gatefold. In fact, I've got some of these animals cut out. Let's have a look. Shall we add him or him? I think we'll add the little one. So make sure I'm not getting any glue on the right hand side. There we are. He can go in there, so he's going like that. Let's lock him into place. Let's add, I don't use that because the red is disappearing, so I think I'll use him up here on the blue. So I've left that side open so we can get the photo behind it. I've got a clamshell, should we add the clamshell? Let's add him. There. We've got a seahorse. Ah, we've got this fish. I think we'll have him over here. And I've got another one facing the other way. Oh, I just put the glue on the wrong side. I'm actually working on the other side now, aren't I? So let's, let's put him, if he's on the bottom, let's put this one near the top. Yeah, I've got the glue off. So we've got our spotty fish up there. Let's have a seahorse. Then down the bottom, you can't see, but you will in a second. Here we go, there's a seahorse. So let's start. Folding it up as we would see it. Let's have this golden fish here. We've got a fish, so we need something to balance him out over here. Let's go with the seahorse. If I do that, I've only got him left, so that's not good. So we're going to put him there. So he is going to have to go here. Fantastic. So there we are. All decorated. Just going to add this on some foam tape.
And there we have it. Our wallet album with a waterfall. Magnetic closure there. And then all these pages opening up to reveal a big central pocket. Oops, I forgot to close it. Thanks for watching. Hope you give it a go. And if you do, tag me in the post if you put it on Facebook or YouTube or something. And I'd love to see what you do. Thanks a lot and see you again.